Hello everyone, welcome back once again. In this video we will look at Windows Forms in .NET Core using the Visual Studio 2019. But before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do. So with Windows Forms, you develop smart clients. Smart clients are graphically rich applications that are easy to deploy and update. They can work when they are connected to or disconnected from the internet and can access resources on the local computer in a more secure manner than traditional Windows applications. So in this video, we look at how we can install the necessary requirements to be able to get started with Windows Forms inside the Visual Studio 2019. So to be able to do that, we have to open the Windows installer. So if you have it ready, you can you can open it or if it's done, you can download and install it. So it's the Windows Microsoft Visual Studio installer. So we open that. So as you can see, I've got the Visual Studio installer open here. So to be able to, to build your desktop application, um, my apologies is in Italian, but it's pretty much the same. So we're gonna scroll down up to building a desktop application. This one here. So here with this one here, you can create a WPF Windows Forms and console application with C Sharp. So you have to make sure that you check, download and install this part here before we actually go to the next stage. So you have to make sure you've got Visual Studio 2019, at least the latest version from this video. And then you can, you can select this bit here as well. So once you've got all that sorted out, then we can go on to the create a new project. So on the language side here, you can you can select C sharp language and then you can leave it at all platforms and then you can select the desktop on the on the project types here. So we can select the desktop project. So once we've done that we we can look for our Windows form. So here we have a couple of applications being shown. So we can look for the Windows Forms. So Windows Forms application using .NET Core and the language is C Sharp, of course, it's a desktop application. So here we can click on this bit here and then click on the next. So here now, as you can see, we've got um, a project configuration dialog. Here you can name, rename the project the location of the project and the solution name or to create a new one if you want to. In this case, we leave everything as they are and we move on to the create project. So I'm just going to pause it while the whole thing loads up. Yeah, so as you can see, we've got the project created. And if you look at uh, the solution explorer, we've got um, the forms for the form1.cs and program.cs. So we've actually got two files. Um, created for us inside our new application. So we look inside the program.cs. So the program.cs contains a method, the main method, which is the main entry point for the application. Yeah, and then we, as you can see here, we've got the application.run. So it's actually going to start by running the form one. So we go, we open the form one. So the form in Windows Forms, a form is a visual surface in which you display information to the user, you ordinarily build Windows Forms application by adding controls to forms and developing response to user actions, such as mouse click or key presses. A control, which we will look at it later on, is a discrete user interface element that displays data or accepts data input. So if we look at the, this, this form one here, as you can see, it's a partial class. So once we expand it, so there are a bunch of other attached partial classes to it. So we open this designer. This will actually open the design, the design interface where we can, we can uh, visually add controls or elements to the, to the, 
to the canvas. So to, to open the UI designer, we click on this form here. So now we've got this designer where we can place our user controls. So we can click on the toolbox here. So from here, we can select multiple controls that we want to put inside our, our form. So we can put something like a button. So you can drag and drop it to whatever part of the form that you want to put it. I'm just gonna put it here. And then we have got this window, which is the property window here. We can make changes to the bottom or the, the selected element. Here we can change the name. And we can change the name, the name of the of the element here. We're just gonna call this one. We're just gonna call it message. We're just gonna call this message here. Then we can we can select one more. Here we can type in to set whatever control that we're looking for. We can put a label here. And we can also give the level name, level one. So we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it as it is here. So this one will be like a small message. But that's the one I was looking for actually. We make this one a small message. That's the name. Then can scroll up here. And we look for the content test. So here are the test we can put whatever test that we want. And once we save it, it will reflect on the here straight. So as you can see here we've got this is the first test. So we click on the button here. And this part we can also handle some certain events for the, bu the button. So we, we can handle the event by clicking this bit here. The events here we've got a click event and all sort of events. We can double click it here to, to create an event that we want to handle. In this case, in this case we've got a message underscore click. So we can put a small message that we created as the, as the label dot test. Then we can set it a name or we can put some test here. So this is the first test you all. So as you can see, it's a very simple style. So message does not exist. So we come back here. I will look for the name that I actually gave it properly. So here we gave it no name still. So let's make it a small letter M message. Okay, it's an invalid property. So let's put something else. Test message. So the test message, we just make it capital T here. And we can copy it as well. So now we have it saved. So we come back to the form to handle the event handler. So we change this bit here to test message and then the test value. So in this case here, yeah, when this button is clicked, you want this message to be displayed. So you see the way we go about it here. So right now we can we can run it by cl clicking the start or clicking on the F5. So as you can see now, I have the application running here. So I've got the test showing with the 
send button here so once we click on this here we expect it to change so as you can see we're able to handle the click event so it's very easy very easy to get started with this bit here so i'll leave it here for you to build on your knowledge so if you haven't subscribed again please make sure you do and catch up on the next video bye bye